All right, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, the NASDAQ regular trading hours, New York AM. Watching to see how we handle this premium SIBI here. I'm on a top step reset. I blew out my daily loss limit. chart next draw on liquidity would be I guess the next SIBI I'll wait for that for a while. Let's see if we get that. Trade up into this order block. Midpoint of that comes in a little bit higher. Okay. I suppose that is where it should be. We'll see if we get those. I don't know. But I always ask at all times where price is drawing. It's drawing to something. It's reaching for something. 
first civvy didn't stop it. See if the second civvy slows it down. Okay, I'm short one. traded through the one hour civvy. We'll see where this 30 minute closes. Coming up to uh, midpoint of that hourly order block, I think. Short two. Check out hourly order block okay hourly or we're trading above the midpoint of the hourly order block I got the draw on liquidity incorrect um, last overnight. I thought we were drawing back down to, um, well, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, regular trading hours gap down here. But we had regular trading hours gap here that hadn't been traded back into. We had regular trading hours gap back here that hadn't been traded into. And then obviously price has not re-delivered, rebalanced these sibbies up here. It's kind of left those intact. So First short came in at the midpoint of the hourly um, SIBI. Second short came in at the midpoint of hourly order block, or maybe I think it was the 30 minute order block. Yeah. So this order block here, that's a premium order block. And uh, second short came there. Yeah, I had some recordings I was going to upload last night, but I traded very badly last night. And I didn't have the stomach to upload them. So during our electronic trading hours, I missed the draw. Thought we were drawing lower. We were not drawing lower. We were drawing up into this, these two hourly civvies, two civvy principal. Two civvy principles, like if it's going to number one, it's going to number two. <laughs> NASDAQ is not in the mood to leave any inefficiencies uh, unironed. Really in the mood to iron them out. 20%, 30% are the thank God it's Friday model. It's 20% now 
retracement of our current weekly range. Second blue line is 30% retracement of our current weekly range. You can see that we put in most of the work today on Friday. So traded through an old daily volume imbalance, traded up to the rejection block on the daily chart. Okay. Low that took us to the high, right here. The low that took us to the high. Want to see that get closed below? Yeah, I traded very badly last night, the overnight session. Wasn't good. Wasn't good at all. I missed the draw on liquidity. Draw on liquidity was obviously um, higher, and I should have played that scenario out in my head. Okay, oftentimes seeing lower when I should be seeing both sides of the marketplace. You should be making a bearish and a bullish scenario in your head. This was the bullish scenario, obviously. Bullish scenario was we came up. The bullish scenario would be we come up and we trade back into premium order block, rejection block, so daily rejection block, one hour, uh, one hour SIBI, premium SIBIs up here. That was another idea. And I missed it. So, would like to see a close below 345 evens. I'm not going to put on any more contracts at this point for now. One more contract's coming on if uh, if we get a close below here. Okay, third contract's going to come on there. Uh, let me actually check out our one minute order block here. Traded below the open of that, so it counts. contract is coming on at my sell limit. That's that one minute order block that we just made. 50% of that 
I'd actually do one tick or two ticks lower. I don't know if I get that. That actually seems unlikely. Just gonna wait on it though. So you might be wondering what is the um, 20%, 30%? That is the Michael Huddleston's Thank God It's Friday model. Um, after a big rally like this and the day is Friday, um, the market should come back to 20% to th between 20 and 30% of the weekly range and close there. So that is the Thank God It's Friday model. Probably need to start using breaker blocks more. Don't use those very much. You see we have a high, low, a higher high. So midpoint of this breaker would be 1350, 1346.25. It's a high, low, higher high. Okay, order block would take it from the body. Midpoint of that is Yeah, this took me a few tries to get there. I think that should be our high of the week. Yeah, I don't use breaker blocks very often. Um, should probably use the breaker block more often. Contract three comes off. Our high there was um, one tick above my entry. Three sixty three spot seven five. to rejection block. could we be drawing if we're still drawing higher move that rejection block that could be 390 that could be a draw that that wick up there could be a draw premium wick 402 spot 75 
hourly chart. That could be a draw. Let's get to daily. Daily premium wick would come in at like 415. That seems unlikely, but I guess it's possible. We made it up to daily rejection block. Rejected off that. Would be a very reasonable place, logical place for it to reject. Daily rejection block. Close of that candle comes in at 066 evens. High of this candle, 76.75. So, be pretty reasonable for the high that we just made to be the high of the day, high of the week. I think. So, um, first contract came on at the midpoint of this one hour uh, premium SIBI. Second contract came on at the midpoint of this uh, 30 minute here premium order block. Okay. Premium order block. The third contract came on one minute, one minute order block. And that was third contract. Okay, stop will go to break even soon. Not yet. I'm looking for, uh, let's see, current dealing range, a reasonable target. So you are 25% of that, 73 evens. Yep, I'm in a very reasonable spot for the target. Okay. So, we talked in a, one of my last videos about your initial stop, and your initial stop should go where your trade idea is invalid. Break even stops should come in the marketplace uh, in a similar concept, which is that um, your break even stops should come in whenever you feel that your your profit target, that aspect of the equation, is probably not valid. Well, I, I guess I shouldn't say that. It's, it's when, if the marketplace would come and stop you out, you're probably wrong. Okay, so break even is coming in now. Profit limit for top step today would be uh, 3600 Yeah, I got the draw on liquidity wrong last night. Probably should have just stuck to trading one contract. I really did. I didn't upload those recordings. I didn't I didn't want to just show you a bunch of losses. Okay. Breaker block concept is high low higher high that would be um, high low higher high breaker block and so from this low to this high midpoint of the breaker block would be at 4625 so that would be another reasonable spot to add on a contract I cannot I'm on a scaling plan but another reasonable spot would be 
midpoint of the breaker block, and that would be at a 346.25. 346.25 would be a breaker block. Coming up into Sibi. This is not worthy of being stopped out on a stupid break-even stop like that. I believe that should be our high of the week. Breaker block concept, high, low, higher, high. Currently working. High, low, higher, high. We're currently working um, in a premium. Premium in our breaking a breaker block. One minute chart. What else am I seeing? Working in this order block here. Working up to the mean threshold of that threshold of that order block bear order block right here working up to the mean threshold of that probably will tag the mean threshold of that also a sibby it's up here so it's probably going to uh, 62 quarters Probably, probably. Working in that bear sorter block here. If we trade below these two green candles, that would be a new bear sorter block. I'm watching that. Trade below the open of this candle. So if we get a trade below 39 quarters, that would be a bear sorter block. We get it. So we came up in here, uh, past the first SIBI here, up into premium bear sorter block on the one hour chart, regular trading hours. Traded all the way up through and re-delivered. We re-delivered um, this one hour SIBI here. You can see we traded up through it, traded back down. So we re-delivered, rebalanced that. And that low is gonna be at 366.25. Our high came in at 376.75. So our high came above premium wick. It came up into daily rejection block. You can see our daily rejection block here, the close of that candle. It's 374 evens, so we rejected that. Breaker block, high, low, higher, high. We're working in the top half of the breaker block right now. So high, so take it from low to high, and we're working in a uh, working at about the equilibrium of that breaker block. 
which would have been another decent entry in and of itself. Okay. One minute order block here worked up just to the mean threshold of that, just shy of it. Uh, coming up on the London close in 45 minutes. Again, that's London close in 45 minutes. So if we get a trade below open of this candle, 353 evens, that would be a bear sorter block. I missed the draw. The draw on liquidity is a key factor in your analysis. You need to be aware of what you think the draw on liquidity is on your higher time frames. And I missed it. I missed this premium SIBI up here we, while we were trading down in electronic trading hours. Um, draw on liquidity. Let's see. Also, let's go to our electronic trading hours for a moment. Let's go to an hourly chart. We were electronic trading hours. We took out a lot of highs. Um, see, key high would be here. It's not really during a session time. This key high was that. Basically, a New York AM high that was taken out. New York uh, lunch high from Wednesday that was taken out. Thursday's, say, pre market high that was taken out. New York London PM high took that out. So, a lot of our liquidity targets were swept. Uh, looking at our electronic trading hours, you can see the Sibby here. We traded pretty well above that though, so that wasn't really an ideal. Say premium order block there. Didn't quite make it to the 25% of that, so lost some accuracy if you're using um, electronic trading hours. We're back to regular trading hours. Because uh, we're in regular trading hours, so you're in regular trading hours, you want to use it. Okay. That should be the high of the week in my opinion. Reached a higher time frame level that was visible on the chart. I missed it initially. Uh, got there later after a few tries. I believe that that high should be the high of the week right there. That comes in at 376 spot 75. That's my current thought. Let's reference the daily chart. Let's hide the drawings. Let's hide the executions. We are looking at daily rejection block. Getting some attention. Reacted off that. Came up into this candle's wick inefficiency. So, current draw on liquidity. Let's go up to a, a one hour chart, see our hourly draw on liquidity. Um, opening gap is going to be an hourly draw on liquidity. Thank God it's Friday pattern is going to be an hour, hourly draw on liquidity lower. Draw on liquidity higher, very almost impossible for me to say. I mean, maybe 471. I think we pretty much hit our uh, long bias targets. I think we hit our bullish targets there, put in the high. I think our bullish target there was that one hour SIBI. Uh, premium bear SIBI. I believe that that was our longer term target there to the upside. So I think we did hit that. Now, um, I'm thinking that we come back down to, thank God it's Friday, 20% and to opening gap. I think we get 
I think it would be unreasonable. So looking at our opening gap, I don't think we're actually going to get this thing filled. Maximum, the maximum I would say the NASDAQ would want today would be half of it. More likely, a quarter. And that would line up with our, thank God it's Friday, 30% retracement. So I think the NASDAQ is coming back to 217 quarters uh, because that is our opening gap. And it is also our, thank God it's Friday, 30%. So this trade uh, took me three attempts. Um, I got the draw on liquidity wrong in the overnight session. Uh, I wasn't looking for our premium SIBI up here. So I didn't see our draw on liquidity. Uh, but it was there. It was visible. If you're using your hourly regular trading hours, that SIBI right there that we came right back up to, redelivered, rebalanced. That was uh, quite visible. So it was it was there. I believe that, that uh, 370 six spot, uh, three quarters was probably the high of the day so I think the NASDAQ um, will now be drawing back to opening range gap and to thank God it's Friday retracement levels I believe that that is the draw now on liquidity could be a couple hours before we get back down to opening range gap and that would be at just below our, our low here, 238 spot 50. So I do believe that we trade into 238 spot 50. That would be trading back into our opening range gap. I believe that that is what the NASDAQ will be doing. Coming back drawn, it should be drawn down to opening range gap. London Stock Exchange closes in um, 30 minutes. Okay, so draw on liquidity now should be, thank God it's Friday, 20% retracement and 30% retracement. Should also be opening range gap. As you can see down here, big hole in the chart. That's opening range gap. Okay. Four hour, I mean, basically there's no, you know, that those are our bearish draws. Bullish draw. I think we hit our... We delivered into a higher time frame premium SIBI here. And that was our bullish target, in my opinion. We did deliver that.
closed below the low that took us to the high here. Okay. Traded back up. Uh, traded back up again. Closed below the next. The next low. Traded back up into this. Uh, well, that's an immediate rebalance that took us lower. It's not a SIBI. Immediate rebalance there. Breaker block, high, low, higher, high. Right there. So the EQ of that, 346 spot 25. Reasonable short was also there. That's our breaker block uh, mean threshold. Current dealing range. Current dealing range would be from our opening low to our opening high. You can see that we are trading in a premium. So we're trading up in a premium relative to current dealing range. So, you know, I've preached that you should not worry, that you should not overemphasize the higher time frames. You shouldn't underemphasize them either. So there's a balance, balance in day trading. That is um, balance with everything. You got to balance your stop loss, your initial stop loss. You got to balance your profit targets. You, you got to balance everything. It's all balance. Nothing, people tell you that there's hard and rigid rules. Not in optimized day trading, there's not. Optimal day trading is balance everything. Discretionary analysis. So. Yeah, I can't believe how young I am to lose my fucking hair. But here we go. I'm a bald motherfucker. Um, yeah, at this point, okay, if you're wondering what's uh, my, my trades, I will tell you. I had to reset this account due to a whole lot of uh, mal trading overnight. I missed the correct draw on liquidity. I'm on top step trader step two. I'm automatically step two on top step, as I have been funded before. Um, go to our one hour chart. Using the one hour as our higher time frame, the draw on the NASDAQ's liquidity was up to this premium sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency. That was our hourly draw on liquidity. Only really visible here on regular trading hours. And so we hit it during regular trading hours. That was our draw on liquidity. You could also say that this rejection block up here was a draw on liquidity that we just didn't quite hit. Okay. In addition to that, we had another draw on liquidity, and that was this premium mortar block. Okay. We came up, tagged the mean threshold of that order block right there. Okay. Tag that. So we had premium SIBI and we had premium order block on the hourly time frame on our regular trading hours. Those were both draws on liquidity. Now if you were using electronic trading hours, let me see what was visible. Let's try the 30 minute.
Okay, so premium order block there was visible on electronic trading hours, and that got you pretty close as well. I mean, that basically premium order block on electronic trading hours also got you there. Last night when we were trading down here, I completely whiffed on our draw on liquidity. Uh, I whiffed on what we were doing. I'm not going to lie to you. While we were still trading down here lethargically, the price was not very clear to me at all. So I should have spent more time on the higher time frame, spending some good and intimate time with our hourly chart here on electronic trading hours, seeing that we had a premium, did have a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency here that we had not redelivered. We also had a premium order block that we had not redelivered. So it was visible to you on hourly chart here on electronic trading hours. Uh, really would have been a bitch to see, but uh, it was there. Especially this Sibby. Let's see. Hourly order block using that candle. Didn't quite make it to there. 30 minutes from that low. Let's see. Body of this green candle here to the, these three candles. That's a premium order block. And price obviously did come right back to that premium order block. Just turned on a dime at the mean threshold of that. Now, you had to correctly identify that that was it in order to get in at the top. Correctly identify that that premium order block there was um, was the draw. That was the draw on liquidity for Friday's trading. That's on electronic trading hours, so you could have seen that in the overnight session. But at all times, you can flip on your regular trading hours and uh, look at what matters. This is really what the chart looks like. See regular trading hours. What the NASDAQ really looks like. That's really what it looks like during electronic, uh, sorry, regular trading hours. Yeah, that's too much. That's above my profit limit. it. That's the profit limit for my step two. Pretty disappointed with my trading today. You're not seeing it because I didn't upload those recordings. They were pretty terrible. That will be my profit limit there. Stop, top step, step two, minus commissions. That will be just uh, shy of uh, $3,600. And that will be the profit limit. That's 3600 So maybe we'll get funded next week. It's possible. Price is, uh, let's see. Maybe it'll be clear in a higher time frame. Working in this black candle right here. It's an immediate rebalance right there. See that it was going to be a SIBI, but it immediately rebalanced. That's an immediate rebalance. Uh, which should be a good sign. 
on the London profit hour. This is a balanced price range here. It's another balanced price range right there. Uh, yeah, it's two balanced price ranges. 50% of that. Three thirty nine spot two five. You can see the closes of our current one minute candles are respecting this balance price range. Current draw on liquidity would be opening range gap, as well as twenty percent retracement and thirty percent retracements of our weekly range. Those would be our current draws on liquidity. Fifty percent of our balance price range that we just made. Fifty percent inversion of that would be thirty-nine spot two five. Price appears to be uh, respecting that. Candle closes are sticking below that. That's current idea. One minute chart. Difficult for me to see any one uh, one minute draw higher. Maybe sixty one quarters. It's not visible. Not seeing any inefficiencies. Nope. Wick. Fifteen minute chart. That was pretty strenuous to find. One hour chart. 30 minute chart. Volume imbalance is lower. That should be a temporary draw here on liquidity. That'd be a reasonable spot to take profit if you were close to your profit limit. Okay, you see how the algorithm has respected the 50% of our balance price range here, inverted. The algorithm respected that with the closes of the candles thus far. Or the algorithm has respected that. 50%. The algorithm should be drawing us down to opening range gap and 20 and 30 percent of thank god it's friday so 20 percent retracement of our weekly range the algorithm should be interested in that so i think the algorithm would want to close us for resettlement today at 15,248 spot 50. that's where i think the algorithm wants to take us Coming up into, well, I guess just a short term high here. 
was respecting the midpoint of this balance price range. Kind of hoping that would remain the case. Yeah, it's probably 6150. That's probably what it wants. get our close here. Dealing range right here. Also dealing range right here. And just use this one. Currently sitting in a short term premium. Newest dealing range. Okay. Now sitting in a small discount. Price just delivered two closes here. Above, uh, unfortunately, above a short term high. But I do believe that price is going to be drawn lower. Could come all the way back up to um, 61 evens before it goes back lower. When you get the higher time frame draw and liquidity correct, your lower time frame PD rays are just going to fall in line. It'll just happen. That's that's why you have to get your higher time frame uh, draw and liquidity accurate. It's the most important thing is all the all the momentary sort of. PD arrays that you're seeing here on a lower time frame they're all secondary to the higher time frame draw on liquidity so our higher time frame draw on liquidity was this premium one hour SIBI that was visible on the regular trading hours that low came in at 366.25 price delivered that okay price delivered that now it was also interested if we see in this one hour you can also see this was an order block and it was also a 30 minute order block that price delivered. So really whether you were looking at order block theory or you were looking at uh, SIBIs and BISIs, price delivered your higher time frame. So your higher time frame SIBI also delivered your higher time frame uh, bearish order block, re-delivered into that price. So at this moment in time, it's working in that same SIBI, just working in the range of that. See that? The cursor its just working, uh, making you think it might want to invert it, but I don't think it does. I think we delivered our higher time frame target. So 15 minutes until the London Stock Exchange closes.
one minute chart you see the price closed above a short term high but didn't close above the next one did make a little double bottom here on the consequent encouragement of this wick but as I believe that the higher time frame draw on liquidity has been delivered, um, I don't believe it has a reason to go back up and stop me out. I think it has a reason to do that. Because our higher time frame draw on liquidity has been delivered. So, my opinion has not changed with the current price action my current belief is that there are two draws on liquidity I'm looking at for price first is opening range gap concept that would take us down to below the today's opening low so that would take us that would take us to 238 quarters just below this low two other draws on liquidity I'm looking at thank God it's Friday model 20% retracement of the weekly range, 30% retracement of the weekly range here. Those are two things I'm looking at as well. Those should both, both be um, tugging on price, drawing on price lower. terms of anything that could be drawing us higher I don't see it not on 30 minute chart not on an hourly chart I don't see it I see draws lower We do have um, a SIBI here that's not been re-delivered, and that comes up to 62 halves. I could definitely see 62 halves. We're coming back up to break even. Uh, but as I'm convicted that price has put in its high for the week, uh, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. So 62 halves could come up and re-deliver that before moving back lower. My opinion on price has not changed with the current price action, as I do believe that we are drawing lower. But uh, I believe that we are experiencing some time distortion here. A whole lot of nothingness to make you believe that price is, uh, you know, potentially going to put in a new high, which I don't believe that it is. I believe that that is our high of the week right there. That high would come in at 376.75. Go to our electronic trading hours. You can see that coming into the pre-market we had a significant Judas swing. We put in our low London session. Yeah, I missed that. Because I missed our higher time frame draw on liquidity, which was up here. That SIBI you could see on electronic as well. But you flip on regular trading hours, it was certainly visible. Okay. We're back to rec uh, regular trading hours. We're not looking at electronic at the moment. So. Essentially, right, currently trading up on the NASDAQ 1.63%. It's my opinion that the day will close around 1.3% up. Somewhere in that ballpark, 1.3%.
What is a breakaway gap? Breakaway gap is a higher time frame gap that, uh, well, not really a higher time frame gap. It's it's a gap after a higher time frame level has been hit that should remain open. It's a breakaway gap. What is a measuring gap? A measuring gap is a gap uh, that's remaining open that should show you approximately half of the move. Measuring gap. And a common gap is any of the... Uh, the common gap is by far mostly what you're going to see. You're going to see most inefficiencies get ironed out pretty quickly. Uh, but when they don't, it's either a measuring gap or a breakaway gap. Okay? Breakaway gap is formed when you see, like here for example, price is coming back down, and if it leaves that open, that's a breakaway gap. Okay? You see how this curls back up and trades back through this SIBI as soon as we formed it? That would just be a common gap. We didn't break away there. So an inefficiency that is undelivered is either a breakaway gap or a measuring gap. Common gap is everything else. So price right now has not formed its breakaway gap to the downside. Looking at uh, our run up here, that would probably be a measure, measuring gap. So let's take this low there to that gap. And let's clone that box a couple times. Clone it once. on it again and we're looking at approximately 2.75 standard deviations from the measuring gap let's see if we include the measuring gap exactly three so that was a measuring gap right there that is algorithmic price delivery to the to the literal tick high so what am I showing you here? If you see that an inefficiency has, has been left open, price is not traded back to it, it is either a breakaway gap or it is a common, sorry, a measuring gap. What is measuring? What is it measuring? It's measuring, as you know, I believe that, let's get some, to some basics here. I believe that price is delivered by a computerized algorithm, that the highs and lows and everything in between is all predetermined. So what is, what is the algorithm doing with the measuring gap? It's measuring a certain number of standard deviations higher or lower from that point. In this case, you can see it was two. We'll make those boxes blue. So that's what you're looking at there, measuring gap, using your regular trading hours. It's measuring from the distance from the uh, the low created here in the open up to the measuring gap, it's measuring a number of standard deviations, meaning measured moves higher than the measuring gap, that it wants price to go. And it delivers exactly that amount, two standard deviations. So that is the measuring gap. Now, that information, if you can correctly identify the gap that it is, Oftentimes, you know, it'll tell you there's some amount of standard deviation that it wants to move higher or lower if you correctly identify what type of gap it is. Okay, so the measuring gap, you can literally measure. What is a standard deviation projection? You take some amount of price action, so you take here from the low to the measuring gap. Okay, take that, clone the box, all right? And that's this same amount of price distance projected higher by factor of standard deviation. Okay, that's your standard deviation projection, and it's very useful. So it should be you should be in a habit of using your standard deviation projections. So another lesson there. I'll leave those up for you for a minute. Comment below measuring gap if you actually give a fuck. You probably still think that it's not algorithmic, even though I'm literally showing you a standard deviation projection from a random ass point. 
I don't know. You still think it's like eight, 1935. I don't know. 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 Absurd. Absolutely absurd, друзья. That doesn't mean that I've made a bunch of money trading just because I know these concepts. It doesn't. Because I still get a misinterpret what the algorithm is doing. So, like, I blew out a couple top step accounts today before I finally went on my hourly time frame, found our higher time frame draw, and then, then I was on it. So, still have a lot of work to do myself. There's a lot of concepts here that are all playing at once. Measuring gap is a good one. There are three types of gaps, I'll just remind you. Breakaway gap, measuring gap, and common gap. The breakaway, the breakaway gap is where price initiates a move, initiates a swing. Okay, so let's see if we go find a breakaway gap. Okay, here's a good example of it. That's a breakaway gap. There. The price does not want to come back to it. Okay. Got lots of breaking breakaway gaps are at the start of the move. It's kind of your launching point right there. Start of the swing. Breakaway gap. Measuring gap is measuring something. These can be left open as well. So let's see if this uh, works out here. Yeah, it's one standard deviation. Looks like. Almost. Let's see if we use the top of the measuring gap yeah so we'll call it one standard deviation so that little yellow box right there was measuring from low to measuring gap standard deviation higher that's your standard deviation projection and that is your measuring gap it's letting the algorithm know how far it wants to take price by factor of standard deviation. Okay, so we'll outline our example as price comes back down. You can see here that this has remained open. So this is likely going to be a breakaway gap. Like that orange. No, orange is not. No, it's too blue. Like that. No. Let's do that. Okay. So this is probably going to be a breakaway gap. What is it breaking away from? A higher time frame level. This one hour should be breaking away from a higher time frame level. This one hour uh, premium SIBI. Okay. You see that we are breaking back down away from it. So that's what that one minute here breakaway gap is breaking away from. So sometimes you're going to get a measuring gap and the, the movement higher is going to be two standard deviations. Sometimes it's going to be six. You don't really know. But it's going to be some amount of standard deviation higher than the measuring gap. Usually it's one or two. Sometimes two and a half. But sometimes it's six. Sometimes it's 13. So the standard deviation is, is really impressive when you look um, it's more of a confirmation tool than anything, in my opinion. Unless you want to blindly guess that the standard deviation move is going to be two. Two is a good guess. Two is always a good guess. If you can take it from low to measuring gap and then take a st two standard deviation from the measuring gap, that's probably a good guess. You're blindly guessing, but if it confirms other things, If it confirms, you know, what you're also seeing here on another time frame chart, some, some other PD ray. Okay, we use our measuring gap con concept. 
here. If this can remain open, that feels like it's probably going to remain open. So let's go box to measuring gap. Okay, that's probably going to be a measuring gap. Let's take our standard deviations. Make this well. Let's make this box green, green box. That gap right there is probably staying open. And let's take a two standard deviation move lower. Oh. Lo and behold, that takes you back to prior measuring gap. Okay. So we're probably looking here pretty quickly at uh, 281 evens. Takes us back to prior measuring gap. That would be a two standard deviation move from low to measuring gap. If this SIBI here remains open, that's a measuring gap midpoint of another move. If it doesn't remain open, it's not a measuring gap. Okay? Let's see. Two minute chart. Is it visible? Three minute chart. It's visible. Okay. Three minute measuring gap. if it remains open. If price comes back, curls back up, back into a prior range, it's not a measuring gap. It should remain open to be a measuring gap. Now, I don't think that that's a hard and fast rule. It is definitely with a breakaway gap. Breakaway gap should definitely remain open. Measuring gap should remain open. Yeah, it's still open. So this is what price does. The algorithm delivers on a factor of standard deviation projections. You just don't always know how many. Two is a good guess. Three is a decent guess. Two and a half is a pretty good guess. I would stick by default with two standard deviations. Okay. If you don't know advanced gap theory, you need to type in, I might pin it to this video's comment. I think, I think the theme of my trading this New York AM session is going to be standard deviation projections and advanced gap theory. If you don't know about advanced gap theory, uh, you need to go watch Michael's video on it. I'll pin it as the top comment, advanced gap theory. I'll pin it as the top comment. Uh, put in the, that'll be the, I'll make that the theme of this, um, the theme of this, this one. Okay, so you're learning ICT concepts, you're learning how the algorithm delivers price, how the pricing engine delivers us the price, then, uh, you know, this should be a good primer on it. Standard deviation projections. Uh, I will probably come back and tape read price for you 
this is going to be my profit limit, so I'm no longer able to trade if I hit the buy limit here. I want to see that the purple box where my crosshair is, I want to see that remain open. Uh, why do I want to see that remain open? That would mean that that's a measuring gap. And we're looking at our next swing at least coming down uh, to 281. want to see where the purple box where my crosshair is. I uh, want to see that remain open. Three types of fair value gaps, if you haven't looked into advanced gap theory. Breakaway gap, measuring gap, and common gap. Common gaps are the ones that can be refilled, rebalanced, reclaimed. Breakaway gaps should not be traded back into. Measuring gaps should really not be traded back into either. The breakaway gap shows you the initiation of a new swing, a new move. The measuring gap is showing you uh, from the initiation to the move to the measuring gap. Uh, from that point, how many standard deviations does the algorithm want to take price? Usually it's two, sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's only one. Depends on the time of the day. Depends on your higher time frame draws on liquidity. Two is a good guess. Two standard deviations from the measuring gap is a very reasonable guess. If you see that price is closing, a fair value gap, it's re-delivering it, trading back into a fair value gap, it's not a breakaway gap and it's probably not a measuring gap. It's probably just a common gap. So that is what you're seeing on the left side of the chart. You're seeing uh, we are on regular trading hours. The time is 11.37 New York local time. Uh, I'm working on a top step, step two working on mastering the financial markets, working on algorithmic theory. As you know, that I, I believe that the price is delivered by uh, an algorithm called the Interbank Price Delivery Algorithm. Uh, that price is uh, delivered by a pricing engine, basically. It's all automated. Order flow is not real. Uh, kind of, but not really. Uh, volume is fake. Uh, I believe that all the indicators that you use on your chart are nonsense. Uh, Merely because I have not been successful yet does not really mean that I'm, my premise is wrong. Uh, it just means I haven't mastered this yet, but I will. This will get you closer to accuracy than any, any of your indicators. Um, I believe that the news is horseshit, fake. that if you're still trying to trade the news, economic releases, you are a triceratops. It's all, it's, it's just algorithmic, that's it, just algorithms. Or really one big pricing engine. It's all baked into the cake, predetermined. It's all predetermined, my friends. It's all, it's already in the cards. The deck is rigged. Price is already delivered by an algorithm. Just need to master that algorithm and what it's working off of. This price is controlled. None of this is real. It's controlled. Not real in the sense that you think it is. It's just computerized. Just numbers. That's it. Just math. It's just math. The math I'm looking at right now is standard deviation projections from a measuring gap. So, all right, I'm out.
Let me make sure that. Yep, that's good. Okay, that's the profit limit. Um, would be interested to see here if we get get that green box filled. Standard two standard deviations using this as a measuring gap. see if we redeliver right there. It's 281. That's what I want to see if we get. You will see uh, measuring and breakaway gaps and common gaps all over the place. Move away from current price action for a second. Let's go to a one minute time frame. Take our swing low here. Take this swing. So here, say it would be our breakaway gap. Okay. Didn't fully re-deliver that. Next one's going to be the measuring gap right there. The algorithm is referencing. Let's take high to measuring gap. Okay, let's make that a purple. Purple's kind of tough. Let's do yellow. So, let's clone that. Let's go right there. It's one standard deviation. Let's clone that. That's two standard deviations. That's how you use the measuring gap right there. Advanced gap theory. In action. So you can see the price started with a breakaway gap here that did not get fully redelivered. We then formed a measuring gap that did not get traded back into. And then price, the algorithm referenced using its standard deviation projections, it's often going to be two. Sometimes one, sometimes three, sometimes six, often two. Um, what we did is I took the high to the measuring gap. I then cloned that, okay, from the bottom of the measuring gap. You could also use the top, but I cloned this one. It's a little bit, a little bit more accurate with the, with the bottom. And it is approximately within five points, yeah, five points exactly two standard deviations. How do you use that information? Well, come over here on our left and see that we had order flow over here. So we had structure over here. You know the price can react off of order flow. Um, so a little volume balance right there so it confirms. See two standard deviations coming down. And it confirms what you're already seeing on the left here. Would be a good way to use the measuring gap concept it's advanced gap theory. You know, a lot of the stuff that Michael teaches, you only keep, you don't, you don't, you don't apply his concepts. You know, that's why it's not working for you because you're not actually like applying. <laughs> you're not applying what he's doing. Basically, you have to like this video of his was pure gold. You didn't even, you didn't probably even realize that it was pure gold, right? You got right onto his next thing. Measuring gap, breakaway gap. Let's take from high to, let's try measuring gap high. Let's see if that is a standard deviation projection. 
clone. Yeah, it's a little bit more than one. Yeah, this is not going to be perfect. This is going to be like one and a half. That's pretty fucking close, though. Pretty close to perfect. Almost exactly two standard deviations. Didn't quite get there. Missed that by three points. Three points is pretty good fucking accuracy. Advanced gap theory in action. You're seeing it? So, there you go. I need to go back and watch this video on advanced gap theory. That's how I'm able to predict what Price is about to do. One way. You see we're coming up on two standard deviations here on our current price action. So how did I get my standard deviation projection from, what is that, measuring gap? Three minute chart. You can see that we had a fair value gap here. It's not visible on the four, it is visible on the four minute actually. Well, we took our three minute chart here, we take it from, take our fair value gap here that did not get traded back into. We know that's either a, if it's not traded back into, it's either a breakaway or it's a measuring. Measuring is usually gonna be measuring something. Okay, it's not gonna be at the top of the move. So breakaway, our breakaway was on the one minute here. Visible on the one minute was our breakaway for the swing down. That was your breakaway. Three minute, your measuring was visible. So just by taking the distance there from, show you. Okay, just by taking the distance here from high to measuring gap, almost exactly, but not quite, put it right there. See, so oh, it's, it's pretty perfect, but it's not like to the tick. Close though. So you can see that what I did was I took us from high to measuring gap, and then from, from there, just standard deviation project us down using, being conservative with it and using the high of the fair value gap. Now, it could also end up looking like this, right there. We're not being conservative. Looking like that. So, you know, you're within a you're within a range here of very high accuracy. Perfect? No. This one was perfect. I mean it was exact. I don't know yet here on the way down how it's gonna be how perfect it's gonna be. So, take this information about measuring gaps and standard deviation projections. Good way to get your profit targets. Um, the other thing is that you want to pair this advanced gap theory with your other concepts. So all of your other PD arrays, all of your other, you know, you start it always starts with a higher time frame draw on liquidity. That's where it starts. The analysis goes down from there. So you can see that price pretty, uh, let's see if we use that model there, almost two standard deviations exactly. Almost within three points margin of error, two standard deviation projections down from the measuring gap. So there it is. Um, I want to take a break. Uh, I did hit the profit limit here 
so I can no longer trade. Yeah, hit the profit limit, so I can no longer trade. Maybe I'll be funded next week. We'll see. Um, I'm working on it. Working on it, folks. I'm gonna get there eventually. It's gonna be hard. I live on nothing. And I'm very poor. Uh, the only reason why I've learned all this stuff is not out of curiosity. It's out of need. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'm going to link advanced gap theory, standard deviation projections, uh, into the pinned comment to this one. This has been the New York AM session. Let's do a little review of the trade. Show it to you. Okay, let's hide the drawings for a moment. If you are coming in, the hour is one and a half, one hour is 36 minutes into this recording, and I'm going to outline the trade for you, what I was seeing. Number one, as soon as we get to regular trading hours, we want to click on regular trading hours. The second it opens, we're clicking regular trading hours. Then we go to a higher time frame, four hour daily, weekly, one hour. We're looking for a higher time frame draw on liquidity that prices the algorithm is wanting to deliver. Price is wanting to deliver some sort of higher time frame level, higher time frame level that it's interested in. This instance, if you see my crosshair, using our regular trading hours, we can see that price in the overnight session, I missed this. I admit that I missed this. I thought it was going down today. I was wrong. Um, Price in the overnight session drew to this premium SIBI. Why is it premium? Well, it's relative to this dealing range here. Okay, it's premium relative to that. We rebalanced, redelivered, and then rebalanced this premium one-hour SIBI there at thirteen thousand forty-three spot fifty. Now, in addition to that, you can see that we had an order block here, and we came in. The halfway point of that is going to be about sixty-seven. We came in, we redelivered and rebalanced 67 and quarters. That is going to be the midpoint of that hourly order block. That's a premium order block right there. Okay, 30 minute chart, regular trading hours. You can see the same concept here with our SIBI, premium SIBI right there. Price came in and redelivered that. But in addition to that, you can see that we have a bearish order block here on a higher time frame. And price came in perfectly up to about to the midpoint of that mean, mean threshold and turned lower, reacted immediately. In addition to that, we also took out regular trading hours gaps that had not been traded back into. So on the way up through our electronic trading hours, we were re-delivering into these regular trading hours gaps, although that was not the swing terminus. Why did I take the trade where I did? Well, as I saw that we were coming up above this premium SIBI, what I did is I took my FIB tool took it on the order block here and got in short at the 50% of the order block. Got in, I think, first, well, I don't know. One minute chart, come down to our one minute chart. Okay, I was using higher time frame levels to make the first two entries. Okay, SIBI and order block were the first two entries. Second entry was right here at 62 50. And what is 6250? 6250. Leave. Yeah, that was the 50% of this one minute order block. Now, price did end up going a little bit higher than that. Probably a 30 second order block up there, or 15 second. But I wasn't quite there. I was on the one minute. So uh, I did take a little bit of drawdown on that one, seven points. Then, in terms of taking, looking for targets. After price had redelivered a its higher time frame targets, I'm then looking for what a reasonable profit target would be. Now, because I'm on top step, I have a profit limit. I'm on top step step two. It's simulated trading. And my profit limit is thirty six hundred dollars. So my exit here was exactly you can see pretty much almost thirty six hundred dollars minus commissions. Because I have to do that. So that's where my profit target was. But in addition to that, let's say that I didn't have a profit target and I could hold the trade on longer. A couple of things. We are going to draw to two primary levels here for the remainder of the trading session. I might come back and rediscuss this. 
The first is the 20% retracement, or thank God it's Friday, 20% retracement of our weekly range that we just formed. So in order to get that, you need to take your FIB tool, take the high to the low here, and you need to do, uh, thank God it's Friday, and draw it the other way. Okay, so that's a 20% retracement of our weekly range. It's a Friday pattern. Michael taught, Michael taught that like over a week ago. Thank God it's Friday pattern. The 20% to 30% retracement, probably landing at the 25% retracement of our entire weekly range. Okay, that is the thank God it's Friday levels there. That's that model. In addition to that, we have our standard opening range gap here that price is going to be drawn to. It's going to be drawn to a couple different levels on our opening range gap. It's going to be drawn to the 25 and 50 percent of our opening range gap, especially 183, as that is the midpoint of our opening range gap. It might get to 183 evens during the PM session today. I cannot trade the PM session as I've hit my profit target. So, I might tape read it though for you if you want. So, um, looking at confluence of different models, I think it's highly likely that we're looking at 217 spot 50 coming just below the New York low here that we made, New York AM low. I do think we're probably going to take that out. In addition to that, we spent some time discussing measuring gaps, discussing standard deviation projections, using our measuring gaps for, for standard deviation projections. I first showed you how price formed a measuring gap here after creating a regular trading hours gap, which we'll call that our breakaway gap, using the regular trading hours gap as a breakaway gap. We could see that price formed a measuring gap here. Okay, Then from the low of the open today to the measuring gap, it standard the standard deviation was two. On the way back down, we did the same exact thing. We had a breakaway gap on the one minute chart. We had a measuring gap here on the three minute chart. And by taking the high of the swing point to the measuring gap and then projecting that lower to standard deviations, we see that we come within three points of our current swing low. Ergo, the power of advanced gap theory, which is going to be the theme of the theme of this stream, quote unquote. All right, that's going to be it. Use all my affiliate links. Um, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Bye.